Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We continue our coverage of the sport, perhaps a divergent path today, just to take another look, and as we should, the sport encompasses everybody of all kinds, races, creeds, abilities, disabilities, and it does so with welcoming arms. Joining us today uh, into the Nike hot seat, he goes from, and you said Dallas, is that right, Casey? Yep, yeah, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, where they're doing two big shows. One of the founders of the band X Ambassadors and their hit song Renegades, of course, Casey Harris. Casey joins us. Casey, how are you? I'm doing really well. How about you, Ed? I'm good, bud. Thanks for taking the time. This has been something that's been hammering at me for a while, and I didn't know why I, I wanted to talk to you guys or, or why I want to talk to Sam, or you know, just to kind of get a feel for... Uh, the validity of this song, uh, Renegades in particular, but I've totally. absolutely fallen in love with your music. Oh, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Talk to us about the, uh, we'll go back and talk about Renegades, but let's address the music because your music is a very distinct style. There's an incredible beat. Uh, you, you use the bass very, very well. Uh, can you talk to us about thank the you. style of music that you guys have? Well, I mean, we're, we're a very, you know, we like to think of ourselves as pretty eclectic. Um, so we've got to, you know, our, especially if you listen to our album, VHF, it, you know, it spans a huge range of different sounds from soul to hard rock. You know, there's lots of hip hop influences in there too. And definitely some folk influences too. And that, that's, I think, the folk influences stand out the most probably on Renegade. But it has a lot of those other elements too. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we're the type of band that we, we have a lot of different influences from all over. And, you know, it, it's it's basically impossible for us not to write a, a song without including a lot of those influences, which I think is, you know, one of the reasons why Renegade has a very unique tone to it. It's also, I have to give a lot of credit to our producer, Alex DeKitt, who has a very unique ear and sense of music. And um, and yet he was very instrumental in the the sound of that track. And the sound of that track has sold well. As a matter of fact, you guys formed a corporate relationship with a major major company, a company on worldwide. Of course, that being Jeep. Your song and you guys are featured in the commercials for the sale of the Jeep Renegade. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. How cool is that? I mean, let's face it, the car was not necessarily named after the song, or should have been. <laughs> but Well, it, I mean, it's, it was a funny coincidence because, you know, we'd, uh, you know, the song was written, um, our, you know, our producer, Alex the Kid, comes to, my brother writes all the lyrics, um, and but sometimes our producer will come to him with either song title ideas or like theme ideas for a chorus, and he came to him with the word renegade. And, uh, you know, Sam wrote a couple, actually a couple different things incorporating that word. But then we finally sort of, you know, collectively the band decided that the, the you know, the version or the, the sort of the song, because they weren't the same song, they were completely different songs, but the song idea based off of that word that we liked the most was this sort of semi-acoustic, um, almost folky song. And, um, and so we recorded it as literally one of the last tracks that we were going to put on the album. We recorded it about a month and a half before we released the album. And, uh, and it just, you know, it seemed like out of the blue a couple, you know, it must have been no more than a couple of days after we recorded it and sent it to our, uh, our producer. He, he gave us a call and said, uh, you know, hey guys, um, I've been talking with Jeep. And they really want to use your new song for their Renegades campaign um, because it fits so perfectly. And, you know, you know, we're all, you know, of course, all over it. You know, we're, you know, we're looking for, you know, as every band does, you know, whatever opportunities we can to get our name out there. And this is you know, such a good one. Self-promoting is a big deal, and uh, you guys are handling it well. You just played a show in Des Moines that was sold out right. for many, many days in advance, uh, uh, what I call an intimate club, Woolies, but um, you play every <laughs> yeah. uh, every place you play, it seems like you treat the facility the same way. The fans are the fans, and they are loving you guys. Oh, they are, we honestly, we are so lucky to have somehow gotten literally the best fan base possible. I mean, they're, they're the most responsive, most just 
honest and you know genuine fans I can imagine. They're so enthusiastic, and it's it's incredible because it's in every city we go to, and you know some cities we play huge shows, some cities we play smaller shows, but they're always you know packed, and the people who go to them shows are just they're always showing us so much love. So I you know I can't I can't say enough good things about our fans, honestly. We're super lucky to have that. They're sure pioneers in the world of music. And I want to go back to the song Renegades if I can, if only to to uh perhaps identify what has been the hook for me. Uh and uh yeah. there there are some great lyrics in there. It says Run Away with Me, Lost Souls and Revelry, Running Wild and Running Free, Two Kids, You and Me. Is that about you and Sam, um, well, you know, it's funny. I'm, you know, I may be his brother, but you know, I, I, I have a hard time reading his mind. And you know, he writes, he writes all the lyrics. You know, you know, usually very minimal consultation from the rest of us. We all collaborate on the music. But the lyrics are pretty much Sam's uh, zone. But I, you know, just, you know, from my perspective, just the interpreting after the fact, I think it has a lot to do with yeah, just. Not necessarily him and me, but just the idea of, you know, just two kids in a small town, you know, growing up, because that's, you know, pretty much what, you know, we all are in the band, you know, especially me, Sam, and Adam, or me, Sam, and Noah uh, grew up in Ithaca, New York, which is a small town. Adam grew up in the Valley near LA, which strangely has a similar sort of small town vibe at times. And it, it's, you know, it's just, it's where we came from. I like and the I think vibe. That, uh, that line. That line definitely evokes that sort of that image. Ithaca, New York, the home of Cornell University, has a great vibe to it. It doesn't get the snow that Buffalo does because of the lake. God bless them. So it's a great place to winter if you have to winter. But also incredible wrestling yeah. with the uh, Big Red of Cornell. Um, I know that the, the chorus is 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 as much of the hook as the storyline is, but in this case, it says "All hail the underdogs, all hail the new kids, all hail the outlaws, the Spielbergs and the Kubricks." So, yeah. underdogs for me yeah. would represent what you guys are putting forward in the video, and that is the uh, what somewhat typifies being handicapped. I see. Uh, people uh, with, like in Kyle Maynard's place, for example, being born with no arms and no legs, or oh, yeah. at least a uh, normal semblance of that, he sees himself completely yeah. differently than the balance of the world, I think. Would you agree? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, most people don't, you know, it's, it's like anything, honestly. When you don't have direct contact with something and you can only infer from you know, reading or watching things about it. Like, if you don't know someone with a disability and the only information you have is what you've gotten from media, then, you know, you, you generally have a pretty different view of what it's like to be disabled than the actual person who is disabled, you know. And generally, it's generally it's the outside world that, you know, t that tends to underestimate, you know, Whereas, you know, it, it, and, and this, I don't know how to put this quite well, to assume that someone who's disabled can't do something where it's that disabled person, not only can they do that thing, but it's like a, a normal everyday thing. It's not like a big deal to them that they can do it, if you know what I mean. Like, there's so many people, I can't tell you how often I'll do something, and people will be like, wow, how do you do that when you're blind? And I I never even thought about it. It's like not, a, not an issue, of course. It's just, you know, easy. Can't that means you lack yeah, like I, I think that you know, the underdog perspective that you know disabled people I think are often viewed as the underdog more from the outside than they than they view themselves or at least I view myself I don't view myself as and never really have viewed myself as necessarily an underdog whereas perhaps you know other people have simply because to them it looks like I'm overcoming things that would they think they would have a hard time doing with the same disability. We're talking, we're talking with one of the founders of the uh, hit band Ambassadors, X Ambassadors. If you're looking for it on YouTube, Google, or of course you can order the albums now as well online, and we encourage you to do so. Go to uh, Amazon.com, check out any of the great sites that feature great albums for sale, and X Ambassadors also has a website of their own. It's XAmbassadors.com. Check out content. Check out, uh, check out their tour schedule. I think uh, you might like to find a, a bit of time to spend with them and enjoy what I've been talking about. The 
They are a product of Ithaca, New York, now making their home in Brooklyn, New York. What was the idea behind the move to Brooklyn? Um, I mean, it was pretty much one of those things that, so my brother and Noah had made a plan a long time ago to, after they graduated high school in Ithaca, move to New York and try to, you know, make it as a band there or at least go to college there. I actually went off um, and did a, you know, the piano tuning school, uh, technical school while uh, they were doing their first year of college there. So I joined them actually uh, a year after they'd um, they moved down there, and by then they had met Adam and just been starting to jam. And you know, I'd been playing with the band in high school, so I came back and sort of rejoined and rejoined with Adam. And you know, we basically we all ended up sticking in New York. It just seemed like the most you know logical place. There's so many opportunities there. You know, it's just very up and coming band. It's pretty much New York or LA are the two places to be. New York and LA, two places to be. I've got. One yeah. of one of my world class motorcyclists, an AMA rider, he lives in Brooklyn. I said, "Really? I would thought you live in New Jersey or someplace <laughs> where you could find a place to park your trailer." <laughs> it's I oh, tell yeah. you what, it's hard sometimes. Yeah. Interscope Records has oh, been a terrific yeah. label for you guys. Can you talk about your relationship with Interscope Records? Yeah, and it's funny because we are we're dev we're part of Interscope, but we're part of a subsidiary of Interscope that's our producer's personal label. It's called Kid in a Corner Records, um, and it's under the Interscope umbrella, but it's his own personal uh, label, and it's, you know, he, he's, he's done Imagine Dragons, he's done Skylar Gray, you know, he has a lot of successful other artists, but it's, it's pretty much Alex who say as far as what goes on in the label, which is fantastic, honestly, and it's a I feel like a vastly different experience than if we were dealing strictly with the corporate beast of the label, you know, by themselves. Having the personal connection and having it, you know, having it be, you know, that he's not only our label head but also our producer, so he's personally invested in the music, really, I think, makes us into a, a, a cohesive team with them rather than being an adversarial relationship, which I feel like a lot of bands and labels have. Uh, it's interesting sure. to say that the adversarial relationship is always about a battle sometimes, and uh, you guys seem to be on track doing what you're doing. We love it. We appreciate the access today, Casey. Your time, very valuable, and uh, we wanted to get across. I think what we got across was that uh, your music is welcoming to so many, and it is, I think, the music of this generation and so much more. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so much. That, that means a lot to hear. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for doing this, man. Give my best to your brother and the rest of your bandmates. Uh, keep on keeping on, dude. I love the music, and uh, the fans are responding as they should. Thank you again, man. Will do. Casey Harris has been our guest. The band X Ambassadors on the Kid in the Corner label under Interscope Records. Look for the album VHS at a store near you or, of course, online as well. For all of us at Takedown, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to, as it were, step outside the box. Mm -hmm.